Today we'll be solving October November 24 paper 2 2 one of the latest exams that we have. This is a very very simple question and it is kind of similar to one of the questions that has been tested before in one of the papers. So first of all we'll plan this question then we'll visualize and then we code. So let's start by planning this and highlighting the important information that is given to us. So we have a 1D array called rooms which contains the names of up to 20 rooms in a house. So that means there would be 20 indices in this array then we have a 2d array called dimensions which will store the length the width and the area so we have these three features that will be saving in this array the position of the rooms data is in the same index as in the rooms or dimensions okay so then uh, the same thing that is given in most of the exams that one index will reference the same same type of data in the other index so relevant data not the type then we have a variable number that will store the number of rooms for which the data is to be input there must be at least three but not more than 20 rooms so here we have to have some sort of validation check again whenever you have to apply some validation in the exam it should always be in a conditional loop never inside an if condition okay because we don't want to accept any input that is not appropriate until user gives the, us the right input all right so in this program we have to allow the number of rooms for which the user will input the data so this will be the first one then allow the name again the length and the width in meters to be entered and stored so this means that we'll be storing this in dimensions array then we allow the area of each room to be calculated as length multiplied by width very simple stored as square meters rounded to two decimal places okay so here we instantly know that we have to use the one of the functions that is given to us the library routines and here we'll use the round function so we should instantly write that so we don't forget it afterwards it's equal to round area by two decimal place so this is how it would look like in the code then calculate the average area size okay so this is what we also have to do we have to calculate the average of all the rooms by area so average size of all the rooms by area in square meters again rounded to two decimal places so here we'll have another round that we have to place please keep that in mind there would be two rounds then we have to find the largest room and the smallest room by area and then we have to output the names of all the rooms with their dimensions and areas so we have to output all the data so we have to output the length the width and the area for all rooms all right so for each room there would be three values that will be outputting and let's say we have 20 rooms so there would be a total of 60 values outputted output is the name of the largest and the smallest room by area so the largest and the smallest by area smallest and Large. and then outputs the total area of the house and the average size of the rooms by age so we also have to output the total area and the total average now the question statement is pretty straightforward and so is the implementation what we essentially have to do is we need to input the values into the array so first let's visualize this okay and this is the visualization for this as the question said we have 1d array called rooms so this is 1d array called rooms with uh, these names from attack on titan and then we have the dimensions or array which will contain the length in the first column the width in the second column and the area in the third column we don't have to write these i'm just writing these to annotate the columns you can ignore them. and then the mapping is the same so as they said there that the indices correspond to each other so let's say if we have levi here on index four so the all the dimensions of this room would be in row number four in the dimensions array so the length is four the width is eight and the area is 32 similarly if we go to erwin so erwin also has the same length width area separately all right so mapping is the same first index will correspond to the first row in dimensions second index third index from rooms will correspond to the second or the third row in the dimensions array this is just one way of mapping the data in a convenient way okay so let's begin writing the code so here what, what we also have to do that we need to find the total of all these areas and then we also need to find the average of all these areas and then we also need to find the largest and the smallest so we'll look at it as we go along so the first part is allows the number of rooms which are required to be input stored and validated and the number of rooms must be between 3 and 20 so let's start by adding comments as well because comments add carrying marks in the exam and we do not need to declare anything so i'm not going to declare any new variables or data structures that i'll be using validating number of rooms here we have to either use repeat until or while i'll use repeat until repeat until so first enter number of rooms then we input number okay n should be capital as they have given in the exam the variable number stores the number of rooms so there must be at least three and no more than 20 so we have to use this exact variable given to us until number becomes greater than or equal to 3 and number becomes less than or equal to 20 that is the range given to us no more than 20 means 20 including all right then in the next part it says now we have to allow the name and the length and the width to be stored and 
entered okay so that means we need to store them in the dimensions array like this one by one length width and not the area yet so the name so name will go in the rooms array and length and width will go in dimensions array so they would be we'll be saving two inputs here so let's start storing data into arrays for row one two number okay Y number again because the number will contain the total number of rooms and they would be the same in both arrays because the question clearly tells us that the indices are mapped between each other. Okay, it could be either all the way till 20 or it could be up to three. So I'm let's assume here we have 15. These are all the way from one to 15. For array uh, for row one to number, first of all we need to ask the user to input the name, enter name of room, and then we need to save it in let's say name. Or you can also save it directly in your array called rules index row. It's totally up to you. But let's do it at the end just for the sake of simplicity. Input name. Then the question says you need to input length and width. So again, enter length, input length, or let's call it alien. Then output, enter room width, input width. Or you can just have the full word. Totally up to you. Width. So this is done. Then it says, so we need to store it first. Then we need to calculate the area. And then we need to also store the area in the dimensions area so we can do it all at once first let's actually calculate the area and store all the data at once so area would be length times width and we need to round the area to two decimal places. again we had written this in the exam paper beforehand so it says you must round the area to two decimal places so we need to use the route function again this is given in the pseudocode guide that you can use so we have calculated the area now we need to store the data so here we can say inputting and storing data in arrays and here we are going to storing in names and I mentioned all right so in the names array so it's the rooms in the rooms array will save the name so we'll say rooms index row comma name okay why am I using the row index because row is the loop variable it will initially be one so we'll save the value of the name and the first index let's say it's Aaron when goes on the first index let's say we have next row this time so next row would mean go to the second value or the second index so we'll save the second index the name on the second index let's call it Mikasa then we'll do next row and then it will go to third row third index and so on and so forth so i'm changing it to row. then we need to save the length width and area so dimensions now dimensions is a 2d array as the question clearly said okay so it has rows and it also has columns so we need to use two indices which is the syntax of storing data or accessing the data in a 2d array so row comma one you do not need to use a nested loop in this case because we are clearly clearly told that the alien or the length would be in the first index first column then width would be in the second column, area would be in the third column. So that is the reason we can directly save these using a single loop. So we go to each row and at column one, we put the length, then width, then area. So then dimensions, second column, we save the width and dimensions. Third column, we save the area like this. And with this, we have done the first three parts in, in fact. All right, so we have saved this dummy data here in this array already. Again, we are assuming this is what the final state would look like, not the initial. Initially, all of this would be empty and user would be inputting them one by one. So initially, it will be empty like, okay, so we're done with this part. Then we move on to the next one. Calculate the average size of the rooms by area. So we have to calculate the average of all the rooms. That means we have these all the areas we need to add them together and then we need to find their average as we do in math simple so we'll be summing all these values and then dividing it by number because the number is basically the value of rooms or the count of the rooms that we have in our program so first of all we do that then we also need to find the largest and the smallest now you could do average and so you could do totaling and average separately and finding the maximum and minimum values by area separately or you can do them in one loop i'll do them in one loop because it just saves time as it will be crucial in the exam to do that especially in the 15 mark question so i'll do them all in one loop finding average max and min based on area now how do we calculate the largest and the smallest room by area so as i've stated in previous videos we'll make the assumption that the first value is the largest and the smallest in our case it will be 80 so 80 is largest and 80 is smallest the only reason we make this assumption is because we don't want to second guess the values uh, in our case we can also make the assumption that the max and minimum could be any arbitrary number like we know for sure that area cannot be zero it would at least be one even one is impossible right so you can make any safe assumption like that you can set max equal to zero that means all the values any value inputted larger than zero would become a max potentially either you can use that approach since the range is known or you can use the minimum maximum to set it to the first value of the array the first area 
This will just allow us to give a starting point, a frame of reference from where we begin from and then we don't have to guess any arbitrary number. So we are assuming that max is 80 and min is also 80. So let's see what happens as we go along. Maybe let's change this area to 90. So is 18 greater than max? No. Is 18 less than max? Minimum? Yes. So the new minimum becomes equal to 18 like this. Is 12 greater than max? No. Is 12 less than the current minimum? Yes. So the new minimum becomes 12. Then we have 32. Is 32 greater than the current max? No. Is 32 less than the current minimum? That is also false. Is 16 greater than max? No. Is 16 less than minimum? No. Same for 21. Okay. Is 90 greater than the current max? Yes. So 90 becomes the new max like this. And is 90 less than minimum? No. Is 35 greater than max? No. Is 35 less than minimum? 12. No. Is 40 greater than max? 90. No. Is 40 less than minimum? 12. No. So these would be our final maximum and minimum area. So what we have to do is we have to compare at every point if the current value is greater than the previous max then you make it the new max. Similarly if you have the current value less than the previous minimum you make it the new minimum. So this would be your new max. And this would be your new minimum. And at the same time, the question says you also need to output the names of the largest and the smallest rooms, which means you also need to know which index they're saved on, right? Or the row number in case of dimensions array. So in dimensions array, minimum is at the third row. And we know since the mapping is same. So this room is our min and the max would be on, let's say, row number seven. And this could be, let's say, Sasha. Okay? So these are, this is the final output. Of the program. So we'll say Armin is the room with the smallest area and let's say we have Sasha here is a room name which has the largest area of 90. This is what will output. So this is most important that we just do not calculate the maximum and minimum areas. We also need to save their indices and in order to save the indices we simply get their uh, row index number. Okay? So if the current index is equal to 3 we just save that in a variable similarly for the max as well. Okay so now let's try to do this. We'll start with assumptions that our maximum area and our minimum areas are on the first row third column. Why third column? Because third column is the area, this one. So that is why. Then we need to find the average. So for average, you also need to have a total. So total area is set to zero. If you don't do this, you will lose marks. So this step is very important. You cannot assume that the program will automatically set it to zero. So for row one, two, number, again, number is the number of rows that we have in our program that is given to us. So current is equal to dimensions row comma three. I'm again using this variable. It's up to you if you don't want to use it. It just helps to not rewrite dimensions row comma three over and over again. So we get the current area. The first area is 80 and we add that to the total. So total is equal to total plus current. So the current was, the total was previously zero. The current is 80. So the new area would be, or the new total would be 80. The previous total was 80 and we go to the next row, row two. So row two, the area is 18. So here we get 80 plus 98, that is 80 plus 18, that is 98. And then we go to the next row, that is the value in the third column is 12. So here we have 98 as the previous area and the new value is 12. And we add them together and we get some value, 110 I believe, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is how it's going to work. Change it back to row. So for each row, third column, it will keep adding all these values, 80, 18, 12, 32, etc. Okay, so this is the totaling part, totaling all areas in dimensions array. Now we also need to find the largest and the smallest areas as you've said and like I told you before you can do them in separate loops or you can do in one loop in this case. So I'm doing it in one loop. So finding max area and then finding min area. Finding max area and index. So we need to get the indices of both as well. Okay so we check if the current area if let's say we started with 80 if it is greater than the maximum area, previously stored maximum area, if that is the case, then we set the max area to current and we set a variable max index to row. Okay, what does this mean? Again, since we found a max, let's say, let's make it 82. So 82 is larger than 80, right? So we are saying, is the current larger than the previous max? Yes, 82 is larger than the previous max. So now the max area becomes current. So the current value is 82. So the max area becomes 82. And I'm saying that you need to get the value of row and save it in max index. The now the row is simply the loop variable. So the loop variable would be pro, pro, pointing to row 2. So we are going to save 2 in max index. And let's say if 82 was the maximum, that would mean that the room name is Mikasa. Okay, we have to do the same mapping here. So I'm just getting rid of this because these are uh, supposed to be generic codes. Okay, if that is not the case, I'll say if any value of the current value is less than the minimum area that has been allocated before, 
then the new minimum area would become equal to current and then the minimum index would be equal to row again the very same logic as we have done before so it, like we had 12 here so 12 was more than 80 so 12 became the new minimum then we had other values okay so same procedure let's say we had another value maybe one here so since one was less than 12 so uh, the new minimum would have been one like this and that's the idea and since one is stored on let's say row number eight so we get the character or the room name from row number eight from the rooms array that's how it's going to work okay and with this we do next row and this ends the whole loop so in this loop we have found the largest and the smallest room by areas and we have also calculated the total now we need to find the average and then we need to output the names of the largest and the smallest rooms and then the total area of the house and the average of the house and we also need to output all the rooms with their dimension so the difficult part part is done only the easier part is left now calculating average of all room areas okay how do we calculate the average we simply divide the total by the count so total area this should be equal to total aka not total so total area divided by number because number is the value that has the count of rooms in our program and then the question said again that the average is supposed to be rounded off to two decimal places so we'll say average is equal to round average by two decimal places or you can also create a new variable for this instead of saving it in the same one and then lastly we have to output all the dimensions outputting data for all rooms so again we run a loop for that from one to number for row one to number i'll just you know get the so this is it so output room name room rows then dimensions row one then dimensions row two and then dimensions row power three what this means so room name rows of room so row initially is one so let's replace all these values by one so we are simply saying the first room name is Aaron so we get Aaron here then the room length is in dimensions first row first column that is 10 so we output 10 then first row second column this is the width of the room and then the first row third column that is the area 80 and then next row would change it to 2 and then all of the values would change to the row 2 and then you output their respective data one by one so this is done we have outputted the value for all the rooms and now simply we are left with the largest the smallest the total area and the average so outputting area average maximum and minimum so first of all we output the largest room by area the name okay so in our case we know the name was something and then let's have a name here in fact let's have connie here so this was the maximum room name and the minimum room name was armin okay so how do we output again since we had saved their max index and minimum index we know exactly where they are saved okay we save the indices so we just need to get their index we don't need the maximum minimum value so we can say output largest room name of largest room comma rooms max index okay what happened here the maximum value was stored on index 7 so i just got the value of the name from the rooms array at the same index that would be calling then output name of smallest room comma rooms min index again these are not values i'm making up on the go we essentially saved the current uh, value of the loop variable or the row number or the index of the array in these variables beforehand if you use them directly they will have no effect on the program this would be a zero mark in the paper okay then we just have to output the total area of the house and the average of all the rooms so output total areas for my total area again if you go above so this is the variable that i used to add all the areas and then lastly to output the average average of rooms comma avg and what is avg avg is this variable that in which i saved the average of all the rooms after totaling them and this is the whole program thank you